What's up guys, this is Eric, you're watching The Boulder Brew, and today we're gonna to talk about some super old school manual coffee roasting with the Hive Roaster. Now I stumbled across this little guy because we recently moved abroad, and due to the voltage difference plus just some packing logistics, I had to leave my beloved Fresh Roast SR800 back in the US. So I got to looking for something a little more manual and I stumbled across the Hive. And this is not actually that different from just good old skillet roasting like you might have tried before. You hold it in your hand, put it over a heat source and just kind of swirl it around. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show a demo roast in a little bit. But the, the gist of it's really simple. You just have a dome and you have a, a bottom part with a handle that's very solidly attached. You can see there's a lot of ridges on the bottom that help the coffee beans to agitate so that you're not gonna get a single side of the bean in contact with the bottom and then scorching really badly through your roast. Because that's one of the biggest challenges when you're roasting with a skillet, as you may be all too familiar with. Bottom line is the Hive is a fantastic gadget. You know, there's two simple zero technology pieces. There is nothing to break. There's no need to cool it down between batches. You can, you know, do it until your arms get tired. And uh, as long as you have reasonable expectations, right? So we're not, uh, we're not looking for the same precision, consistency, or evenness that you're gonna get out of an automatic roaster that you're familiar with. Not gonna happen. That said, once you get the hang of it and you figure out the peculiarities of the heat source you're using and kind of what distance above the burner to hold it at what time, you can get some very tasty coffee. I have not been disappointed whatsoever. There was a learning curve. The first few batches, frankly, were terrible. But again, as I got accustomed to the, the nuances of the hive and of the burners I was using, the batches have started to actually become downright enjoyable. So let's hop on over to the scale and then down to the kitchen. And we're gonna walk through a batch and I'll kind of explain what's going on as I do it and a couple of issues that you may run into as you go. The hive can hold about six ounces or 168 grams of coffee. I prefer to load it with about 150 grams or even a little bit less just because I find it's easier to heat that amount evenly. You might start in the ballpark of 120 or 130, and again, I suggest 150 as a kind of a practical upper limit, but do experiment with it. Next, we simply pour the green beans into the base of the roaster, snap the top of the roaster on, start up our burner, and get to shaking. And in a second, I'll show what size of, uh, of flame I've found to work well. This will be immensely variable depending on electric versus gas stoves, as well as the shape and distribution of the flame if it is gas. So again, you'll need to experiment here as well. Anyhow, we uh, get to shaking and the roasting process is basically 12 minutes of this, 10 to 12 minutes, give or take. And after something like four minutes, you should notice the coffee starting to turn a, a little bit yellow. Maybe it starts giving off that kind of grassy aroma that is typical of the drying phase. And I do recommend trying to move from your shoulder and your elbow, not from your wrist. Otherwise, you're gonna find yourself getting very tired very quickly and maybe working up a bit of tendonitis eventually. Then perhaps seven or eight minutes in, the coffee's going to be fairly brown and another minute or two later, it's gonna get a little bit deeper. And you'll notice around this point, if you take it off the burner, it starts emitting a fair amount of smoke, which gets incinerated when it's back over the heat source. And pretty soon, I believe this was roughly the 10 and a half minute mark, you'll start to hear a, a pretty rapid succession of first crack. First some isolated ones, and then a, a quick series, almost like tiny little firecrackers going off. And 
once that begins to die down, you're at the point where the coffee is probably going to be good to drink. If you can't cool it very quickly, I would recommend dumping it at this point. If you want to develop it into second crack, you can certainly continue to do so. So now I'm done, so I'm pulling it off of the heat, holding it under the range hood just to suck up a little of that smoke for a few seconds. And now it's time to dump the beans right out of the hole in the top of the dome. I'm using a colander. Um, this will be a very smoky, probably the smokiest part no matter what. So an open window, range hood, something like that is highly recommended. This is my extremely low tech and inefficient cooling method. Just swirling it around the colander while I blow on it to cool it, to disperse the chaff. But if you can rig up something like a, a fan, or better yet, the suction end of a shop vac, it'll cool it down much faster and help make your output a little more consistent. But all told, the output is not too inconsistent here. Um, you're always going to have a few severely under and over roasted ones just by nature of the, uh, the variability of any sort of stovetop roasting. But all told, I'm pretty pleased with the roast quality, and I haven't sampled this one yet, but I'm quite confident it's going to taste good just in light of the overall development time and the fact that it more or less hit those specific milestones of yellowing at three to four minutes, smoking around seven or so, and first crack about ten and a half. And once it's cooled down a little bit, you'll find it very easy to clean up. Frankly, just shake it out and you'll have at most a little bit of chaff left. You can give that a quick wipe if you want, but this does become seasoned with use. So there's really no need to clean it unless you have, you know, big chunks of stuff that are gonna cause a lot of smoke or something. And I really do have to emphasize just how important it is to keep experimenting. And if you find that your roasts are a bit baked and slow to develop as mine were at first, just turn up the heat and see what happens. Likewise, if you're having serious problems with scorching despite pretty strong agitation, then odds are good that you need to turn the heat down a little bit and or raise it higher up so that you have less direct conduction heating and more convection heating via the airflow that this kind of dome or almost chimney-like design will encourage. All right, so that was the Hive Roaster in a nutshell. We've seen it in action. We've talked about some of the, uh, not, not really issues so much because it, it's so darn simple. There's just not a lot to go wrong, but it does have limitations. And as long as you keep those things in mind, and like I said up front, you have reasonable expectations for a completely manual roasting approach, I think it's pretty hard to be disappointed. And you know, it cost uh, $70 or thereabouts. <laughs> of course, I had to pay through the nose to have it shipped overseas. A, a lot of you might not have that issue. But all told, it is kind of roughly in the same ballpark as a Vittorio stove pop, which is a terrific like hand cranked stove top popcorn popper that I also used to roast with. It's gonna come in more expensive than basic air poppers, but it has a much larger batch size. So if you're willing to trade some effort for capacity, probably a pretty good option. Now, to be frank, if budget and uh, purchasing availability are not issues, I would still go with the fresh roast. You know, I do miss that. I do look forward to using it again. But in the meantime, the Hive is a fantastic introduction because it keeps you front and center with all the kind of sounds and sights and smells of roasting in the most hands-on way possible. You know, if you're kind of conscientious of the process and if you're willing to experiment, you can't not learn a lot about coffee roasting. And for that reason alone, I think it's a marvelous introduction. And if you do choose to upgrade to a fancier roaster from there, which I think is highly likely, not inevitable, but highly likely, then you'll have that much better of an idea of what you're doing when that time comes. So I hope you found this review helpful. If you're using a hive or considering one, leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Thanks guys, and I'll catch you next time.